Here we have some problems in adding and subtracting fractions that all take three steps. The first step is making sure we have common denominators, and if the denominators aren't the same, we have to make them the same by multiplying by some form of the number one. Like in this case, I'm going to multiply one half by three over three. We'll do that in just a second. So first step is getting common denominators. The second step is actually doing the addition or the subtraction. And then the third step is reducing the result so it's in its lowest terms. So we're going to do all three of those steps here. The first step, getting the common denominators, usually requires multiplying one or both of the fractions by some version of one. And remember, one is any number divided by itself. So all of these are versions of one. In this case, we're going to multiply one half by this version of one. And when you multiply something by one, it stays the same. So what we end up with is just another version of one half. We're not really changing the value of this. When we multiply one half by three over three, we multiply across the top, we multiply across the bottom, we get three times one is three, and three times two is six. Uh-huh, so three-sixths is the same thing as one half, but it's got a denominator of six, so now we can add it. 3 6 plus 1 6 is 4 6, but this can be reduced, so we don't want to give 4 6 as our answer. To reduce this, I want to divide the top and the bottom by some factor they have in common. Looks like since they're both even, they could both be divided by 2, so I'm going to divide 4 by 2, I'm going to divide 6 by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and we get 2 thirds. And I can stop there because there's no other common factor between 2 and 3. So that's our answer. Let's try another one. Here we have 9 sixths plus 1 seventh. This is going to be pretty tricky. To get the common denominator, I think I'm going to have to multiply both of these things by the other denominator. So on this side, I'm going to multiply by 7 over 7 because I've got a 7 here. And on this side, I'm going to multiply by 6 over 6 because I've got a 6 over here. What that does is on the bottom, you get 7 times 6 on both sides. So that's how we get a common denominator there. But we've got to do the rest of the multiplication. Multiplying across the top here, 7 times 9 is 63. 7 times 6 is 42. And then we've got 1 times 6 is 6, and 7 times 6 is 42. So step one accomplished, we have our common denominators. Step two, we're going to add. 63 plus 6 is 69, 40 seconds. And step three is reduced to the simplest terms. And you have to figure out if both of these top and bottom can be divided by some number. If you're not sure, you can just start punching it into a calculator. It looks like 69 could be divided by 3. Both 6 and 9 are divisible by 3. Um, is 42 divisible by 3? Well, I could punch that into my calculator. If I do, I find out that 42 divided by 3 is 14. So I'm going to divide both of these by 3, and I get, let's see, that's 23 over 14. And then to check whether I'm done, I have to ask myself, are there any factors in here that they have in common now, other than 1? And I don't think so, because 23 is what we call a prime number. It's only got itself and 1 as factors. So nothing in common with 14. So this looks like our simplest terms. All right, we're going to do one more here, a subtraction problem. This one I think is a little bit easier because I know I can get to 20 down here if I multiply by 4. So the version of 1 I'm going to multiply by is 4 over 4. On the top, we get 16 over 4 times 5 is 20. And now we have minus 1. 20th. So 16 minus 1, here's step 2, 16 minus 1 is 15 over 20. And can we divide the top and the bottom by something they have, some factor they have in common? In this case, yes, I think they're both divisible by 5. So we're going to divide both of those by 5, and we get 15 divided by 5 is 3, 20 divided by 5 is 4. And at that point, I think I can stop because I can't find any common factors between 3 and 4. So that's a little bit of work with doing addition and subtraction of fractions in three steps. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can find us on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.